So we've calculated that the force per unit volume of the E and V vectors in a particular point in space, we started with the Lorentz equation, the Lorentz force equation, then we substituted in um, Gauss's law for rho, which gave us an expression in E. We substitute in, in um, Ampere's law with Maxwell's corrections for the J vector, and we had to at one point substitute in Faraday's law for the uh, time, deriv time derivative of B, and then we reduced everything to this beautiful simple form that looks more complicated than it actually is. And I'm going to reduce this further, introducing a new concept, the tensor, in particular the Maxwell stress tensor. So set this aside, we'll get back to that in a minute. What is a tensor? Well, a tensor is, it, if you think of scalars as one-dimensional constructs, like mass or time or something like that, um, and you think of vectors as like a direction and a magnitude, well, tensors are kind of like a next step up beyond that. They have two component, two indices, nine components. We write them with a double arrow on top. And I haven't really decided what the best way to write that is, so just that's what we get. And so there's nine components, and each of those components, um, there's there's an xx component, an xy component, an xz component, and then an yx, yy, yz component, and finally a zy, zx. Hold on, zx, zy, zz component. So that's the way it works. You can think of it as a matrix, which you know is no different than thinking of a vector as you know. Um, three numbers put together. You know, really that thinking of it like a matrix doesn't do justice to what the tensor actually does. So, but thinking of it like that, let's just draw it like this. So we have TXX, TXY, TXZ, TYX, TYY, TYZ, and then TZX, TZY, T Z, Z. Okay, so three of these terms, the diagonal terms, are called the pressure. Okay. Um, the rest of them are called the shears. Why are they called the pressure and the shears? Um, when you take a vector and multiply it with a tensor, you get back a vector, three components, right? If you were to multiply the tensor with the vector 1, 0, 0, right? You would effectively pull out a vector that's this first column there, okay? And that vector that's this first column there would tell you, would point, some of it would point in the same direction as the vector you gave it, okay? Some of it would point perpendicular to the vector that you gave it, okay? The physical interpretation is, is the tensor, think of the tensor as basically you have three planes, and I'm, I'm not going to do this right at all. Let me try this again. Okay, you have three planes that intersect with each other. Okay, and I think I'm going to get it. And then that goes over there. This goes this way. You can go a little further. Uh, no, it can't. It can't. Oh, shoot. Okay. There's three planes that are basically folded into a box together. Like, maybe you've, you know, packed cans before and you, there's like these little cardboard inserts. Anyway, there's three planes, okay? There's a plane in the XY plane, a plane in the YZ, and XZ, okay? Now, if you were to apply a force to this structure, okay, two things would happen. Number one is the structure would actually crunch, okay? These are the diagonal components. If I pushed on it in the x direction, so I'm pushing on it this way, right? If it contracts in the x direction, that means that there's some kind of pressure going on. That's this term right here, okay? So if I put one zero zero into this thing, I would get something, something, something back, okay? These guys, so let me draw it out for you. So if I take this vector dotted with the matrix, with the tensor, I would get back something that has three components, something in this way, maybe something in this way, and something in this way, right? Okay. This guy, let me circle in one color, yellow, 
is this guy. Okay. Let's get another color. Let's use peach. I don't use peach enough. These two guys are these two guys here. Okay. So if this is the, the big term and these are zero, basically, what this is saying, the tensor is going to create a vector that points in the same direction. Okay. Okay. Now, if I took another vector, let's say I took a vector pointing in the y direction. Again, I'm going to get a vector with three components. Okay. And I am retarded. That's y. Unless that's x. Anyway, whatever. So two of these components are perpendicular to the, the vector you gave it. And one of... I use the wrong colors. Two of these are perpendicular and one of them is not. Okay. The perpendicular is this one and the I'm um, sorry, the parallel is to these ones and these two are perpendicular. And the same thing for the z. If you put in a z vector, you're going to get back a parallel term and a perpendicular term. Okay. So the basically think of it like as three independent planes that take whatever you do to it and convert it to a vector that points some in the same direction and some in perpendicular directions. So I might take the end result of this might be some vector pointing like that. The end result of that might be some vector pointing like that, right? And so this tensor has the effect, like when you take that cardboard boxes and crunch it, not only does it compress, but it also expands in certain directions. If you fold it the right way, you might even push it in and it'll cause it to curl or do some kind of crazy thing. And that's what the tensor describes is when you have this crazy behavior, this non-linear relationship between the vectors, you need a tensor to express that. Okay, so that's kind of a brief introduction to the physical interpretation of a vector of a tensor. Um, there's this great video that I'm going to link to in the comments, where this this uh, this guy actually sits down and explains with sticks and, and blocks what tensors actually are, what they're actually used for. If if you want to have that level of understanding, you have to talk to him, because frankly, I I don't have that level of understanding that he has. I learned a lot from him watching that video. I'll link to it in the comments. Anyway, thanks for your time. I hope you enjoy this. Next, I'm going to talk about the Maxwell stress tensor. Thanks for your time. Bye.